Jeremy Cook here, and today I'm going over a lighting fixture that I made for my workbench. You can see the overhead lights there. It's 12 volt lights controlled by a MOSFET and through my Groundwino Nano board. You can turn it up and down with the buttons. And there's also a PIR sensor that can turn it on automatically. Here's a circuit diagram. D11 is pulled high at all times to power the PIR sensor, while D12 is the input for this. A7 and A2 are pulled low, whereas A5 and A0 are input pull-ups. The lights themselves are controlled by an FQP30NO6L transistor. This just takes the ground from the lights and, and regulates it that way via PWM or analog outputs. Here's another view of the Groundwino Nano board with a, a Nano mounted to it. You've got the buttons that control the, you know, how, how high the lighting is. And then on the other side, I'll wire in a PIR sensor so that can actually turn things brighter automatically. Kind of a fun configuration, it's not normal. You've got the screw terminals on one side and buttons on the other. Not exactly what I envisioned to begin with, but it worked out pretty well here. So PCB away is paying for this video, but I really can't believe how fast these boards got here. It's just been a couple days. So I was quite happy with the service with PCB way. I ordered two boards. One of them didn't quite work out correctly because of a design flaw on my end, but the Granduino Nano boards as shown here looked really good and worked out just as they should have. The MOSFET I wired up with just manually with these, uh, these wires and some heat shrink. That orange wire is the gate, which will allow the Arduino Nano to control just how much current is flowing or actually PWM output the lights. And the other two are the drain in the source, which control all the, do all the heavy lifting of the transistor, you might say. A little heat shrink to get that all nicely covered. Plug that in and it transmits power. Here I'm plugging into power and then ground alternatively to turn it on and off. But really what I'd like to do is just be able to plug it in and unplug it to turn it on and off in this situation. For this, I used a pull down resistor. I think it was 10,000 10, ohms. And once that's hooked up that way, you can just plug it in, unplug it, and it goes off and on. It wasn't hot as far as I could tell, so that's that's a good thing in my opinion. And when you're using a, a microcontroller with this, the pull-down resistor doesn't really matter because it's either going to pull it high or pull it low, and I didn't really have to use that in the main design. Here I am testing it out with an LED with the Arduino Nano Every. This board worked really well until I hooked it up incorrectly, and yeah, I ended up blowing out the microcontroller. So I had to replace that with a, you know, a, a clone... Arduino Nano, just a standard one. Had to pull A7 to ground because for some reason it wasn't quite going to ground when I tried to set it there. And use a little heat shrink just to make sure it was good. Heat that up and yeah, that shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem. At least it hasn't been so far. I was originally thinking about using an EasyFan 2 transistor board with this, but as you can see, it gets up to almost half an amp, which a little bit on the high side gets a little hot, so I thought I'd use a MOSFET instead, which is which is great. It's it's way, way more overkill for this application. So that's a good thing in my opinion, at least in this case. So turn that up, looks good. Turn it down, looks good there too. Turn that on with the MOSFET board. And as far as actually installing this, I had it hooked up from earlier. I just, just didn't even think I'd, re I'd tape it, do anything with it, but I can't leave anything alone, I guess. So t put this up to see if I could turn it up and down, which I can't. I may have another version of this coming up with WS2812B LEDs and more PIR sensors. So stay tuned for that. Maybe even consider subscribing. For now though, I drilled out the PCB, the Groundwino PCB with my milling machine to make the holes wide enough so I could use wood screws on it. There's no traces down there, so it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Hook that up, mark the holes. I drill a pilot hole for both of them. And the wood screws went right in after after a bit of effort, of course. So 
So that was nice and tight. Actually screwed in the MOSFET as well on the top. Kind of like an old school breadboard where people would use actual breadboards to attach electronics. I thought that was kind of, kind of interesting. And yeah, there I am attaching the MOSFET. Probably not the best way to use a heat sink, but as I saw earlier, it wasn't really, it's not really dissipating a whole lot of heat in this application. So I'll go ahead and give this a try now. You can see right here, the lights are in fairly dark, just kind of stay dim mode. So once I walk around to the front, it should, should come on, go a lot brighter. So we'll try to keep track of that. So you can see there, still pretty dim. Um, and then, once I hit the PIR sensor, once it sees me, it lights up. Pretty cool. This wiring hover could be could be a little better. Not great. Once it's on though, once it's recognized, I can turn up. Yep, went off a little bit. I can turn the brightness down and up. Probably want to reverse those two, but kind of see how it works. And I can also turn it off from that. And I've got it programmed so that when it, when it doesn't see me for a while, it actually goes back into a, a kind of dim mode. So we'll, we'll just let it go, go in there for a second. So it turns off when it, she sees me because now it's going by the programmed light. So I can turn that up a little bit. I hope you've enjoyed this benchtop lighting video. I've actually got a second one that I'm working on. It's, it's actually gonna be, you've got PIR sensors in three places so it can hopefully track where you're going and light up some WS2812B LEDs in a corresponding manner. It's been a fun, fun challenge trying to enhance this workbench. At some point, hopefully I'll do an overview of the completed workbench, but for now, I've still got a few more things I wanna do with it. So, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know, like, subscribe, leave a comment, etc., etc. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy Cook, signing off.